iPadOS 26.1 and iOS 26.1 have arrived, bringing a new update to GarageBand for iOS along with them. Here's everything you need to know. Yes, GarageBand for iOS version 2.3.18 is here. And while the App Store description only states that this update brings bug fixes and improvements, there is a full patch notes list available on Apple's website. I'll link to that down below so you can check it out for yourself. There are a fair few changes here, but the most noticeable new feature that comes with GarageBand version 2.3.18 is the brand new app icon. Instead of this, it now looks like this. Let's look at the patch notes, eh? This is very much a bug busting update and there is quite a lot to get through here. I'll highlight the most important stuff here and let you peruse the rest at your leisure. All right then, in the stability and reliability section, GarageBand will no longer become unresponsive or quit unexpectedly after dragging an audio region from one position to another. I never experienced this myself, but that is a fantastic fix if it has affected you. It also resolves an issue where GarageBand would quit unexpectedly when connecting to a Bluetooth device. I have experienced this myself with Bluetooth headphones, not Apple's Bluetooth headphones, but other brands, and it is very, very annoying. So I'm glad to see that that's been fixed. In the drummer section, drummer characters can now be changed by swiping their picture. That's quite a nice quality of life improvement there. And in plugins, dragging and dropping audio files to the sampler now works reliably. There are a couple of specific sound library fixes there, and in the automation section, volume automation curves are now properly included when duplicating a track. Fantastic. I think everybody's experienced some kind of issues while trying to use automation in GarageBand, so it's great that it's been recognised and, well, at least some of the issues have been fixed. Under undo, changing the time signature now correctly creates an undo step. This means that if you change the time signature by accident or something, you can now press undo and it will revert to the time signature you had set before. And toggling track volume automation now creates an undo step too. Again, one of those automation issues that people have been coming up against. This is great to see and will be massively helpful for those using it. Under MIDI, the Airhu instrument no longer exhibits hanging notes if several notes are played at once. And in editing, the piano roll now shows an automation lane for sustain when the pencil is activated. Fantastic stuff. A big one here under sharing, when sharing a song as an uncompressed audio file, the sample rate now defaults to 48 kilohertz. Make sure you keep that one in mind if you're planning to share stems from a project, for example, to collaborate with someone else. And in general, when zoomed into the tracks area, dragging the playhead no longer unexpectedly enables auto-scroll. Fantastic. And audio in GarageBand now continues to function if audio unit extension plugins are deleted from the currently active song. Yes, that is brilliant. That might be the single best feature in this update for me, honestly. And it's now possible to drag an audio file from files to the sampler. This was still really spotty in iPadOS 26 if you had the files window open over the top of the GarageBand window and then tried to drag files from one to the other, it would just kind of crash 
garage band half the time. So that is great that that now actually reliably works. So that's all the big stuff in GarageBand version 2.3.18. Let me know what fix you're most excited about down in the comments and let me know what you think about that new app icon. I certainly have some thoughts. Give that like button a wee tickle if you found this video helpful and for more information about getting the most from GarageBand on your iPad or your iPhone, watch this video next.